Hello, Ken Weller here with New Tech Inventors. Today I'm up at the old print room which serves as a room for doing some 3D printing but mostly assembly and soldering of the various parts that we're making here. I think I've shown you before these particular parts are the base units for the helping hand. We have a lot of these that are partially assembled and then the final phase is where we do the soldering and as I think I mentioned in a previous video my grandson's helping me and at my age my eyesight's not that good and it's difficult and takes time for me to solder one of these things but my grandson's has good eyesight fortunately and he can get in here and run these wires make the connections do the soldering get them put together tested and everything and we're ready to go he was here the other day for a few hours and did all of these these will be ready to go and then I can put the cover plate on and install the locking assembly that goes on the top of these and then uh, they're done so that's some of the stuff that's going on up here on the production side another thing that I wanted to talk a little bit about I get a lot of comments on different things but I think I also mentioned the comment where people frequently ask about my background and different things I've been involved in and so forth and I had stated that when I get 1500 subscribers I'll do some, uh, some videos on my background kind of a history of where I've come from and what I've learned and what I've experienced and so forth in these past 74 years so I've uh, reached 1,500 subscribers thanks to you guys out there, and I appreciate the uh, attention, and I'll follow through, and I'm currently working on some videos, trying to get some videos together to cover these past 74 years. Actually, I'm going to go back a few years before that because I think it's interesting, there's an interesting story in my past on my parents' side. I'm going to include in that how and where they met, under what circumstances, and then a little bit about their long distance courtship during World War II. So, I feel it's an interesting story, an interesting part of my history, because without them, I wouldn't be here talking to you today. So, that's one thing that we're going to be working on and doing. Another thing on the comments, I also need to probably make a list, because there are a lot of good comments out there, and when I have these questions asked, I formulate an answer and put that as a response to the comment. And I know some of you may uh, read the comments and read my response to them and get some answers and feedback that way. But some of them do warrant me including them in a video and sharing those questions and responses with other people because I think they cover topics that are important and some from a business standpoint as far as going out and starting your own business obviously I try to encourage people especially at a younger age to uh, take that step take a little bit of risk I think when I do the videos on my past you'll see that I was willing to step out there and jump into the unknown and you know a few times you don't know how it's going to turn out if you don't try you'll never know but you have to sometimes you have to just get out there and find out for yourselves that's 
that's the way you learn a lot. The uh, other thing that a lot of people ask about, since I have so many different printers, everything from these different Delta printers, Ender 3, they ask why they don't see more of those in the videos or why I'm not using those at the print farm. I think I've explained that pretty well, that when you're doing a print farm, it's so much better if you kind of stick with one type of printer because when you're printing jobs and everything, if you're using a lot of different printers and printing them, then you've got different setups on different printers. Sometimes you have to use different temperatures with different printers. And one reason for that is with this Delta printer, as you can see, the surface is right here on the hot plate. So it will heat up and if the thermocouple on my hot plate says it's uh, 200 degrees Celsius, then it's probably 200 degrees Celsius on the center. But then on some of my ANET printers, I'll have the base plate, then I'll put on the uh, stick-on textured mat, and then I'll put the glass plate on top of that. And by the time you build those different layers, and depending on air circulation in the room, ambient temperature, and a lot of other factors, the temperature at the thermocouple and the temperature at the top of that build plate on the top of that glass can vary a few degrees and sometimes a few degrees is all it takes to make a little bit of difference in the uh, print quality. That's one reason, especially down at the print farm, you see several of the little heat temperature guns and I use those to go down the line and check uh, bed temperatures on the different printers. Also, the thermocouples can react differently based on how they're mounted and fixed and how much conductivity they have between them and the heating element and so forth. You may have two identical printers and sitting side by side and both saying that the bed temperature is 200 degrees and then you shoot it with a gun and you find that one's four degrees hotter than the other. I use the heat guns to try to get a feel for that, and that lets me know, too, if the thermocouples are functioning properly. Those little heat guns cost anywhere from $15 to $25. If you don't have one, it's always a good idea to get one, especially if you're printing on multiple printers. Now, in saying that, if I go down the line and check those bed temperatures, let's say I'm running 10 printers, the same filament, the same part, same identical printers. And I go down and I check, and all 10 of them have the same bed temperature. We're running the same filament. I've got them all set up as close as I can get, a nozzle to the bed. And then I start printing a job, and eight of those printers print the job perfectly. No flaws, no hiccups, but two of them have a problem. Let's say they both have the same problem. They lose adhesion. Well, in a case like that, then there's a couple things. If it's on a glass bed, it could be the, the glue or the glue water mixture or the hairspray or whatever you're using to assist the adhesion it could be a little different on those two, so you have to kind of make sure that they're consistent. But if it's not that, then it could be that you need to recheck and make sure that that nozzle is close enough to that plate that you are putting a little bit of pressure on that bead of filament to help it stick and adhere to that base. I think I've shown you and I could go down there right now to the print farm and show you a box full of filament fragments from parts where I've started a job and something wasn't 
set right and I lost adhesion and just made a mess. And I get a lot of that, especially when I'm first setting up the printers. I assembled a couple more printers down there yesterday. This is the weekend, today's Saturday, and last night I shut down everything. And the only printers I have running right now, I actually have one down in my office running. I'm continuously running some parts down there now. I try to shut down the print farm on weekends so I don't have to deal with that and spend the weekends working more on assembly and also maintenance of the printers and checking them out. But down there, I have enough printers now where I have two printers down there, two ANET ET4s that are set up with glass bed to print one part and one part only. And it's the blank filler piece for that goes in these slots. And I can go down there and I can put filament. I print those in PLA and I can put the spools of PLA on those two printers and just walk away. I don't even have to sit there for a minute to make sure that they started correctly. They print flawlessly every time printing that part and they'll print about each printer I think prints about 10 of them at a time. So each cycle they run, uh, which is about 12 hours, I get about 20 of these parts. And that's because those two printers have been set up correctly. I took the time to get everything set right. I don't mess with them. I don't change parts. I don't change filament. I just run the same thing over and over on them. Now, when I get enough of those parts, I'll just let those printers sit. But then I've got another set of printers that print another part. And that's what I'm in the process of doing right now is trying to go through there and have certain printers designated to print certain parts. Now, some of them may print two different parts or three different parts and they, that they do all this, the print equally as well. But I will run those sometimes with a different part, but I never experiment around. Once I get a printer set up and I know it prints A, B, and C, or just A or B part, then I make a note that that's all that printer runs because I know I can put it on there and not have problems. But I have to do that with every single part. And now I'm up to about 40 different parts that I'm printing. So with 40 different parts, it's a little hard, but I'm, that's what I'm working on right now. So until the next time, happy printing from New Tech Inventors.